Okay, now when you flip the MacBook over, you can see that Apple have completely redesigned the bottom to give you much easier access to both the hard drive over here and your battery. Now I'm just going to give you guys a quick run through of how to remove both the hard drive and the battery, as well as how to gain access to your RAM. Now, you'll notice over here you have this lever. Simply press down the right side of it and then pull it up towards you. Then you'll notice that this panel lifts up. Simply lift it up this way and then pull it out and just set it off to the side. Now you can see you have your hard drive and your battery here. The first thing that you want to do when you want to remove your hard drive is take this little bracket out and just set it off to the side like this. And then another thing that you want to keep in mind is that this little tab right here is not held in with a whole lot of adhesive, if any. So you want to make sure that you're not just pulling it out with just this tab. I would suggest putting your finger in and lifting it up like this. And then you'll notice that this is how it's mounted in here with just these small little brackets. You want to make sure that you replace these on the new hard drive when you go to put it in. And then you simply set it in like this and it will seat itself on the little rubber mounts. Then if you want to remove your battery, again you don't want to pull just on the tab. I would also suggest putting your finger here and then lifting up and towards you. And you can see how it's locked in with this little mechanism that basically just slides over these two little notches here. Then, just like the hard drive, you simply set it in at this angle and set it in like that. Now I'm also going to show you guys how to replace your RAM. You want to make sure that you remove these eight screws here, and I've set them in an order that if you pick them up, you would basically be able to set them in like this. Simply lift up on the panel, and it will remove fairly easily. Now you can actually see the entire inside of your computer. You have your super drive over here, you have your fan, your motherboard, and all of your other boards, as well as your RAM slots here. Now I'm going to show you guys how to remove the RAM. This is actually a two-step process because there are two sticks of RAM, and you're going to need to remove one at a time. The first one, you simply pull these levers out. It will lift up at about a 25 degree angle. Then you just simply pull it out, set it off to the side here. The second one, you do the same thing, you pull these levers out. Make sure you pull them all the way out, otherwise it will stay locked. And then once it lifts up over the second set of locks, you simply pull it out and set it off to the side. Now when it comes time to replacing your RAM, you simply take it, make sure that you have this little notch here off to the left, and simply set it in like this. Again, be sure it's at about a 25 degree angle, then be sure it's pushed in all the way and then just push it down. And you'll know it's mounted correctly by these little circular guides off to the side. And then you just set this next one in, again about 25 degree angle like this, and press it in. And then when you want to replace the cover, simply set it on like this. Be sure that this little black part goes into this notch back here, like that. And then you replace these screws in the order that you took them out. If you haven't already, you want to make sure that you replace this bracket here. And then finally, make sure that when you're setting this cover on, you set it at about a 25 degree angle. Put it in at this end first, then just set it down like that, and then close the lever. And that is how to replace your hard drive, your battery, and your RAM. So hopefully that gives you guys a good idea of how the case is designed, as well as how to replace the hard drive, the battery, and the RAM. Now I just want to say a few things about performance. Now in order to test the performance of both my MacBook and my iMac, I've downloaded a program called Geekbench. Now Geekbench comes in both a 32-bit and a 64-bit version, and because OS X is 64-bit, it is possible to run a 64-bit Geekbench test, but you also have to pay $10 for it, and just for the purposes of this review, I wanted to at least run a 32-bit test on it to show you guys in general how it performs. Now you can see, compared to my iMac, it actually scored very well. And when I say that it's very powerful, this is just to give you guys an idea of just how powerful it is. Now this is also after a fresh install of OS X, so your performance will probably go down slightly as you continue to use your computer. But again, this is just to give you guys a good idea of how well it performs. I am I'm very impressed with how powerful it is. Now if you're looking to eventually upgrade your MacBook, there are a few things that I would suggest. Now the first is upgrading to a 7200 RPM drive and the MacBook comes standard with a 5400 RPM drive and as you can see it still performed very well. Now my iMac also comes with a 7200 RPM drive and it boots considerably faster than my iMac. Again here we are dealing with the desktop hard drive but I would assume that you would still gain quite a bit of performance out of it. You will also see maybe a slight drop in your battery life but I would say if you're going for an added bit of performance it's definitely well worth it. The other thing would be to upgrade your RAM. Now I would suggest not buying your RAM through Apple as Apple do tend to overcharge for theirs. Uh, I would suggest going with the stock amount of RAM and then ordering an upgrade kit. 
Currently, you're going to be paying about $140 for a 4 gigabyte upgrade kit from Crucial. So I would suggest if you don't have the money right now, wait just a few months until DDR3 becomes more widely used. Now, another thing I wanted to touch on is graphics. Now the new MacBooks do come with NVIDIA's 9400M graphics processor, which is integrated. Compared to my IMAX 256MB graphics card, I've noticed that the MacBooks graphics are still very smooth, but they aren't nearly as good in extended gameplay. So if you're going to be gaming on your MacBook, I would expect to have very smooth graphics. They're much improved over the last revision, but I still wouldn't expect to see a desktop graphics card performance out of it. So now just a few final thoughts. As far as battery life is concerned, you can expect to get about 4.5 to 5 hours of battery life with moderate internet usage and basic word processing, and this should definitely be able to get you through the day. Now if you're a college student who's on the go and doesn't always have access to a power outlet, you can expect the battery to charge to about 80% within about 1 hour, and then the final charge takes about 2 hours to finish. Another suggestion, and I did mention this in the first part of the review, keep the backlight to a minimum brightness and this will optimize your battery life. Another thing is, if you don't need the keyboard backlight, I would suggest either disabling it or keeping it as low as possible, as this will also improve your battery life. And then finally, another thing that will tend to drain your battery is if you leave Bluetooth on. If you don't have any need for Bluetooth, I would suggest disabling it and then turning it on when you need it, and then you're only using the resources that you need. So that said, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave me any comments or questions, and I'll try to get back to you about it. Now, I have had this MacBook for about three months now, and based on my experience with it so far, I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. The only cons that I think are worth mentioning is that while they did redesign the bottom of the case, they also made it very difficult to remove the hard drive or the battery without pulling the tabs off. And I would suggest that the first time you remove the hard drive or the battery, if the tabs do come off, be sure to reapply them with a fairly strong glue. Another thing is be very easy on the screws when you're removing them as they do have a tendency to strip very easily. I was able to remove the back cover but it did take quite a bit of effort. So just keep this in mind if you eventually want to upgrade your RAM. Again I hope this video was helpful to you guys and I look forward to hearing from you.